Hello and welcome to Reno Radio. My name is Naomi Finlay and I am Australia's rapid renovation expert. And each week I will be bringing you valuable tips, information and amazing stories from around the world about renovation. Helping people create wealth through renovating is my passion, as well as creating healthy, wealthy and beautiful spaces to live in and to share. Thanks for spending time with me today. Now let the show begin. Hey there. So let's get into it. Let's talk over stage to properties. Yes, there is such a thing. It's actually a bit of a pet peeve of mine because I see so many overstaged properties and it can have such a negative impact on a house when it goes to market. So let's get into it. And I think a really important place to start with this is talking about exactly what preparing your property well for sale is. So we talk about it in a few of our videos about a really well staged home, a really well prepared home and a really well presented home draws people to the highlights of the property and diminishes some of the low lights, never covers them up, but diminishes some of the low lights of the property. And so I think the best way for us to tackle what an overstaged property is, is by describing it as something that does the counter of just that. So if a well-staged property is a property that um, all the highlights of the property are emphasized, that placement is perfect, that styling is perfect to the target market, to make sure that we're highlighting all of the wonderful assets of the property, then what would an overstaged property do? An overstaged property really draws back from that. An overstaged property distracts. And that is a dirty word when it comes to a well-prepared property or home staging. So a well-prepared and a well-staged home distracts the buyer in no way. There are no distractions from the highlights that that property offers. So exactly what is, exactly what is an overstaged home? I'm absolutely certain that you've all seen it. I'm absolutely certain that you guys have seen champagne bottles on the edges of baths, rose petals in baths, six to nine piece dinner settings, reading glasses opened on an inspirational quote on the side of the bed, a pot of coffee on the end of a bed, you know, in a percolator freshly brewed when no one's there. So I can, I'm sure I can hear a lot of you guys probably going, well, what does it matter? Why? Why bother? You know, 10 years ago, it wouldn't have mattered. 10 years ago, people would have just seen the luxury and I guess the nice styling that this brought to a property. However, our buyers are so much more intelligent now. The market has changed and there's an expectation. And one of the things that comes with that expectation is being respectful to the buyer and treating them as the intelligent people that they are. So how does overstaging a property not do that? I guess, have you ever left, left a property where you may, have, um, you may have viewed the property at 9 a.m. in the morning and you get there and not only is the breakfast bar fully set, but also the dining table is fully set for a nine-piece nine piece, um, setting for a four-course meal. So instead of you maybe being drawn to the highlights of that property, instead of you being immediately drawn to the amazing indoor-outdoor area and pool in the back of the property, instead of that, you were distracted by the fact that you're like, wow, it's not dinner time. What? Hold on, I thought we were viewing this property at nine o'clock. I wonder why they've got the table set. And then I think this walks the fine line between a well-staged home and an overstaged home. A well-staged home distracts nobody from the highlights of the property, whereas an overstaged home constantly distracts from the highlights of the property. So another great way to look at it would be if you had viewed 10 properties in any one day, um, there is a high possibility that the overstaged home would be one that you would talk about. It would be instead of maybe recounting, as I said, the pool and the amazing indoor-outdoor area at the back, 
The thing that you might recount about that property is the half-drunk red wine bottle with the red wine glasses by the spa on the back area. Our buyers nowadays are intelligent enough to understand you know, that they can have a glass of wine in the spa. We don't need to, I guess, um, show them how to use the spa. However, if it's a highlight of the property, we need to take them there. So what the red wine on the side of the spa did is distract them from what they might do in the property. So I guess one of the things that you really need to do when you're thinking about staging your home is make sure that you don't walk across that line, that you don't do things in your property that distract a buyer from what they need to be doing, which is purely absorbing and getting excited about the highlights. Another thing that um, can happen when you overstage property is it can often put a little too much of what you think and feel the house is for into it. So when you, when you stage or when you prepare a property for sale, um, which is we all know is an essential, essential key to selling your house for more. But one of the things that you can do when you overstage it is put a little bit too much of what you think the house needs to be used for and how you think the house needs to be used. So a well presented and prepared property will be a bit of a blank canvas. It will show a potential buyer the lifestyle that this property affords them that will allow them to emotionally connect, but to emotionally connect to a property, we can't be distracted. To emotionally connect to a property, they need to be our emotions. So we need someone to have given us a canvas and started to paint a picture in a well-presented property, but we need to let the buyer colour that picture in. Overstaging a property doesn't let the buyer colour that picture in. Overstaging a property distracts a buyer and doesn't allow them to emotionally connect the life they want to have in the property. So let's talk about a few of the sometimes fun and sometimes funny ways that I've seen properties overstage. I truly hope I offend no one out here with these, um, these comments because it is quite a tenuous subject, um, a subject that I'm quite passionate about, but also a subject that um, can offend. So uh, up front, I apologize if you may have overstaged a property with some of these things in the past. Um, I hope you take my comments as they are, which is purely meant to help you increase the amount of money that you sell your house for. So let's talk about some of those things I've seen. I mentioned a few of them earlier, but they're absolutely worthy of being mentioned again. So rose petals in a bath, candlelight lit only bathroom, a spa bath on in the bath, um, bubbles in the bath with a filled champagne glass next to it. Um, an overset dining space um, that literally looks like you're about to have a Christmas or a Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, half empty red wine bottles and some red wine in it. Um, freshly brewed coffee on the end of the bed um, with fresh croissants, regardless of what time the open is. That's a little bit of a faux pas. Um, so some of these things can really walk that fine line. So I guess one thing you need to do to make sure that you don't overstage property is when you're thinking about setting up a vignette or setting up a prop or presenting the house for sale, is you need to ask yourself, would I do this on an everyday basis? If I lived in a perfectly presented home, would I have the red wine by the spa? Would I have the coffee or would 90% of the population have it. That's probably a good guide. If you look at 10 of your friends and you say, would nine of them be like this? Would nine of them present their home like this on a, on a weekly or a daily basis? And if the answer is no, absolutely don't do it. Absolutely don't do it. Because you run the risk of overstaging your home. And when you overstage your home, remember, all you do is distract. Overstaging distracts our buyers from what they really need to be looking at and what they need to be looking at is the highlights and the assets that this property offers the lifestyle that this property can give the buyer so I hope this has helped 
I hope it has helped show you some of the overstage things that can happen in a property and a little bit of what not to do. So I hope you enjoyed today. There is a link below to a few of the funny bloopers that I've seen in overstaged properties. So please click on it, download it, and maybe you can use it as your what not to do list. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening.